So the first thing that, um, that we want to think about when, when we're working with any type of transparent pigment, um, whatever is underneath that pigment is going to reflect through. So to keep the colors very luminous, um, it's said that he worked on a very light ground, uh, most of the time just white, or if anything, just maybe with a very, very light tint to it. Uh, so I'm starting on a pure white ground. And uh, back in the day, they mixed their own ground. They had a formula, uh, which, which they used. I, I just used um, an oil primer and I've sanded it down really smooth. And I think that's the other important thing to understand is to get a, a really high level of detail in the painting. Um, it's much easier if you have a very smooth surface. In the, uh, the head garment, I've drawn out a lot of my shadow shapes in line. I'm just kind of figuring out the placement of my shapes. And the next thing he did would then uh, be to lay in uh, light washes. So these are, uh, somewhat transparent and um, I'm going to just switch over here so I'll talk about all these colors in a moment but what I'm starting off with is this one right here which is just a raw umber um, so this is what he would use for his washes and usually it would be um, you know some type of a brown um, an earth tone they were very limited in their colors at the time like they didn't have all the cads and stuff that we have today. So they had to be very methodical in their approach. And, um, you know, when you're planning, you're painting out this way, you're really thinking about, you're, you're almost planning it for the finish. So you're thinking about every layer that's gonna be reflecting through the next layer um, and how that's going to affect the final layer of color. And hopefully that'll kind of make more sense as I go along here, but just to show you um, how I would start off. So I'm using just the raw umber. And for this, the only thing that I mix with this is a tiny bit of uh, turpentine or turpenoid to get it a little bit more transparent and a little bit more, have a little more of a flow. So you can kind of see how it flows under my brush. Um, there's really no oil. It's just the solvent, which would be turpenoid or turpentine. So I'll just kind of do that in this shadow right here. So I'm just taking that pigment and I am filling in my shape and I'm just kind of spreading it out with the brush um, to create a real soft, even value tone. And this is kind of like doing also, in a way I think of this as like, you're almost drawing the subject in paint. So I would do this in the same way where I would shade this with a pencil or with charcoal, where you kind of go with um, more pressure or more opaque pigment, I should say, for the darker areas, and then more transparent pigment uh, for, the, uh, for the lighter areas. So you get that, just the natural transparency can give you different values. Now what I'm gonna start doing is adding um, opaque colors to the flesh tones. Uh, but when I say color, I'm going to be using an extremely limited palette. And I'm really just thinking about values. Um, the old masters, they would use gray tones uh, just to kind of work out their values and they would model the form, they would create you know, all their transitions. Um, and another term used to describe this is a dead color layer or um, a grisaille, um, which just means very, very limited, um, basically gray tones. So what I'm going to be doing is mixing those up using raw umber, white, and then a tiny bit of ultramarine blue. What I've already put down is, is my guide. Like all of this, all of these shapes are pretty much in the, in the right place. So now all I'm essentially doing is following that guide. And um, I'm just doing it with actual mixtures, but I'm still putting them down kind of semi opaquely. So not completely opaque, not transparent like a wash, but still some trans translucency to it. 
other things that, that I can start to really represent now in this layer is the form, like the transitions from light to dark helps to describe the way the, the planes of the form are turning. Um, so like in the forehead, for example, I might have a, a real gradual transition because that's a rounded uh, plane. Something like the cheekbone might be a little more abrupt. So those, those kinds of things I'm gonna to start to look for. So there's a turn right here from the, the dark shadow of the cheekbone into the half tone, and then finally I'll come up into the light. Um, and those, you know, I wanna really understand all of those transitions um, and kind of mix them up as separate values. Now what I'm ready to do is start glazing. So I'm gonna start working with really transparent color on top of the underpainting, still the underpainting. And um, <clears throat> I'll kind of go through my palette and I'll talk about what I'm gonna use. The other thing that's really important is that everything needs to be dry before you start glazing. Any layer, any layer where you're manipulating things, you wanna make sure the previous layer is dry. So I've prepared each one of these and I've given, you know, this I painted like a week ago. So I know that that's, yeah, there's no danger of that lifting up. If it's not completely dry and then you rub glaze over that, you might lift up that layer. And I'm kind of putting a pool of the oil down first and then I can spread my color into that. Um, and this is like one of the hardest things to really explain is the consistency of a glaze. It's more about the feel um, more than anything. So like what I'm trying to do is just get these brush strokes to flow over the surface. Um, and you can see it's definitely transparent. Like you're, you can see um, variations in that. Uh, it's not watery though. Like that's what you don't want. You don't want to oil this out so much that it, it makes everything kind of drip down like a watercolor. The stand oil helps to, you know, make it a little thicker so that doesn't happen. Um, but this is really kind of what I'm going for. I'm going to put this down over literally my entire uh, underpainting. So it's kind of, you want to make sure this is dry. It's sort of nerve wracking if you're not sure, like, is my paint going to lift up? But I know that because I've given this enough time that that won't happen. What I'm doing right now I'm still paying attention to my value structure, like everything that I put in that first layer, I'm still looking at, but I'm making adjustments now in my color. So I'm adding um, some yellow ochre and some Venetian red right now. And the other thing is like with something like this, what you could potentially do is with the higher saturation colors, just glaze them again. Like this is still kind of, going down kind of dull because I'm still seeing the gray. So then I would let that dry and then I would hit it again, you know, with probably a similar mixture or maybe even the exact same mixture to bring out the brilliance. 